Hey folks, Lester here, and I am live on both platforms. Thank you all for coming and saying hi uh, this morning. It's a little bit early. I got started early because I have a puppy here in my arms. This over here is the one that we've been... <laughs> Hold on a minute. Let me just show y'all. Okay, I have to be honest. This over here is my favorite of all. Mm -hmm. I've been calling her. I've been calling her Darlene, and uh, boy, she wants some milk. And I did not bring Mama. We're gonna do puppies one at a time today. And I brought Darlene. She is by far my favorite, sweetie. Mama's gonna come get you in a few minutes. What's gonna happen is Jamie is going to walk a new puppy out to me every five minutes. So we're gonna have five minutes with one on one. And first up is Darlene. Darlene's upset because I took her away from mama. So the reason I brought Darlene out first is uh, I want to talk to y'all a little bit about how we're going to do the adoption process. So Darlene is the only pup who has been officially promised to a lady. And I'm going to tell you how I chose that lady. And and I'm going to have to give you guys kind of a warning. This is not going to be easy to adopt one of these babies who we love very much. It's not going to be easy. So what I've asked Darlene's uh, future human to do is to send me some pictures of where she's going to live and who she's going to live with. Guys, it would be very unfortunate. I don't want to send my dogs... Uh, I don't want to sound like I'm being like, oh, Lester, you, you know, picky, picky, picky. But I really do. I love these babies and we love Christmas and we do need to make sure that they all go to the best homes possible. So we've gotten quite a few emails. We're not going to have a problem getting uh, good owners for the babies. But what I want to do is make sure that we can forever keep up with the babies. And that means that we want to make sure that whoever adopts him has no qualms with sending us occasional videos as they grow up and uh, that they're not going to be the kind of people who I want to make sure they can offer them a good home. And so I've asked her owner to send me pictures of where she's going to live and, uh, you know, who she's going to be living with. And so I would ask that if anybody, and they can't live too far. I'm not going to ship a puppy across the country, guys. I'm not going to do that. Yes, I know they have companies that do that, but I am not doing it. I will not do that. I'm not going to put a puppy through that. I'm going to, if you want a puppy, you're going to have to come drive and pick it up. We'll meet you halfway if we have to, and you're going to hold it just like this all the way home. You're going to hold it just like this all the way home. Mm while your partner drives or by when, while someone drives. And that's another one of the requirements. Uh, so this puppy's not going to name, she's not going to stay being named Darlene. Her mommy already has a name for her and it's going to be Holly. So this is going to become future Holly. But right now she's Darlene and she is a wiggle worm. Darlene, stop it. Uh, we'll talk about why I'm all wet a little bit later. Sweetie, people are going to think that you're being abused and you're not. You're not being abused. You're nice and warm. We're in, a, in the live shack camper. But um, I would say that for all the folks who are sending emails wanting to adopt a baby, we appreciate that. But I would rather you, instead of just saying, we, wanna, we want the chocolate one, we want the one you guys are calling Pugsley. Just that's kind and polite that you want to be a part of their lives. But you're going to have to let us know what your plans are with each of the babies, where they're going to be living, what kind of yard they're going to have to do their thing in, because it's important to us that they're getting, they're going to really wonderful homes and they're going to have great lives. And uh, if there's any other pets in the family, now I know you could probably go on to Google and just screenshot a whole bunch of stuff. But we're going to ask for you to send us videos and update us. So ultimately, if you become a part of one of their lives, you're going to become a part of our lives as well. And I mean, I mean, social media. So let's make sure these puppies, they've they've been through an ordeal, my friends. And um, look at that. Isn't that just perfect? I'm so happy that we picked up Christmas when we did. 
I can already tell that there's some folks who are going to be angry with me because you think I'm being too picky. I, I'm sorry that I'm going to be picky then because I'll keep every last one of them. I will. I will keep every last one of them and take all this love for myself. And I promise you, Jamie, <laughs> she, she would, we would take every last one of them, even though dog food is so expensive. It's like $24 a bag. Sheesh. Um, but um, so, yes, our little Darlene has already been named Holly. And we're going to we're going to have to start calling her Holly, even though I like Darlene. We will keep her for at least eight weeks. We will make sure that she's well, she's already had her first vet visit yesterday. You all know that. I guess y'all know that. I hope Jamie talked about that already. And so Darlene's had her first vet visit. All the puppies are fine. There was a small issue with the one that we call, I think, Pugsley. But uh, that's been taken care of. And we will talk about more about that whenever Jamie makes her video. But uh, this over here is baby Darlene, and she's the first one. Um, no, uh, you don't want them to become a part of a puppy mill, is true. I'm trying to read both platforms. I have the uh, YouTube down below, and I have Facebook up top. And so that's why my eyes are going back and forth. It's trying to be respectful to both platforms. But um, no, we would rather them not become a part of a puppy mill. But we also are not going to do that long, drawn-out contract thing that I've seen some of the rescues are doing these days. I'll make it real simple. You take this little puppy. I'm going to ask you for occasional updates, videos, pictures. And so I can share those, share those on our videos. And so if you don't think that you're going to be offering this baby a home that's worthy of pictures and videos and a, and, a, and a beautiful yard to play in and a beautiful home to sleep in and loving pet other pets who love her and kids who love her or elderly. I don't care who loves her. Just someone needs a lover. Someone needs to love her like I do. And if you can't do that, then don't, then don't, don't. If you don't like making videos, if you're embarrassed to take a picture, then I, I, that's nothing wrong with that, but that's probably not the best ideal situation for all of these kind folks who love her so much or us because we want to keep up with her forever and ever. Uh, many of you guys may already know this, but I've um, Maggie had a couple of litters of babies, three litters of babies before I got her spayed. And I still to this day keep up with all of Maggie's babies. As a matter of fact, a lot of people are on this page right now who still send me pictures of their babies they got from Maggie. So um, we uh, don't know for sure who the father or the fathers are of these babies, but I will say this, they're going to be big. The, even though Christmas, Christmas is fairly small, these babies are going to be big. They're already big. So, Yes, the vet check was was a good vet check, um, and I believe for the most part, everyone got, they, they're all done. Oh, I did um, have to highlight John Curtin's comment. Even a blind hog finds an acorn every now and then. Must be our lucky day. He says that because he actually caught one of the lives live. Uh, <laughs> that's kind of funny to me, John. Because, uh, you know, even though we, we're doing it live right now at noon central, that's Texas time, um, many of you guys are at work and you won't be able to see it until later. And so sometimes it says live, but it's already recorded. And you're like, oh, man, I wanted to see a real live, like real, real. Well, right now is the real, real at 12.03 U.S. central time. And uh, this is the first baby who we're talking about this morning. Uh, while she's being nice and quiet and uh, resting good, I want to go ahead and apologize for not being able to help the first one better, uh, Little Baby Monday. And we tried, y'all. You know, we probably should have taken her off mom sooner and tried to intervene a little quicker. But at that point, they were all just, you know, there was a lot of stuff going on and you weren't real sure who was who and what was what. But uh, we took Monday off of mom on Monday. 
and we begin to bottle feed her and take care of her. And we, I, I really did. I was doing more of that because I was here more. And uh, I thought things were going very well. We were doing a lot of stuff that you guys were suggesting. Uh-oh, it looks like it's time for a baby switcheroo. Baby swap. I'm bringing you Rocky. Oh, boy. All right, we're going to say our goodbyes to Holly or Darlene for now. And we're going to take Rocky. All right, I like Rocky. I'm going to tell you why. Everyone say bye to Darlene. Darlene, I'm going to have to make you get up now, baby. Wake it up, sweepy. Sweepy head. All right, give me Mr. Rocky. He's wiggly. Baby, who was the one with the little issue? That was not Rocky, was it? It was Rocky. It was Rocky. Okay. So this is Rocky. Mm. <laughs> Rocky. So we got to let him adjust. He's like, why are your hands cold, mister? Put me in the warm towel. So this is Rocky. And now Jamie will make a little bit longer video about this, I'm sure, because she was the one that took them to the vet visit yesterday. Mm, 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 mm. Rocky is the one that I think looks like he has. Look at the colorings here. Uh, the brown feet and black body reminds me so much of a Rockweiler. Rottweiler. Am I saying that wrong? Rockweiler, Rottweiler, you know what I'm saying. And uh, buddy, little buddy, uh, listen. All right, the other one was loud for a moment, too. It's okay, you better get used to being on camera. You better get used to being on camera. Yes, he does look like a Rottweiler. Oh my goodness! Now, Rocky had a small issue with his pee pee hole, his pee pee hole. And uh, the vet discovered yesterday that there was um, there was an issue with his pee pee hole, and they had to go by and do a little minor minor procedure to make sure that everything was flowing smoothly from the pee pee area. And then that was all taken care of, and so he was the only one. Rocky was the only one with a small issue. Um, I don't know exactly how the vet described it to Jamie, but when Jamie messaged me and said what they were doing with Rocky, uh, it wasn't anything major. Oh, he's going to howl. If you if you decide that you want Rocky, you might as well get ready for a howling little dog. <laughs> he will not just whine. He will howl. He's like, you don't smell like mommy. I want to smell mommy. You don't smell like mommy. No, I don't. But hey, you're going to learn to love me. I got eight weeks with you. Seven more weeks, I guess. Uh, so I don't think, I think the colorings, the markings are more of the Rottweiler instead of a German Shepherd. German Shepherd's possible, but uh, I don't know. Just that black and brown feet body, please, remind me so much of a Rottweiler. Because they, they stay that way for life. Okay, you want out of there? You don't want to be colored up? Rocky does want his mommy, but uh, they're doing so good. They're eating very well. Okay, Rocky. Well, I may have to have Jamie come get him a little sooner. Jamie, if you're watching, come get Rocky because he's not going to settle down. Um, Rocky is one of them that always wants the teeth. But look at this belly. Look at that belly. <laughs> he is a big boy. He is going to be huge. I don't know how they can be so big. When they come from a little small, tiny mama who was out living on the streets for two months, who seemed to be just not at the best of health, heartworms and everything else. But uh, Rocky is big. And um, I'll tell you what, I can tell you right now that Christmas is not happy inside the house. She's probably in there going crazy. She's freaking out. She's running around all nuts. And Jamie's having a real struggle keeping her. Oh, baby. Okay. Look at that. Look at the little diva. Look at the little diva. Uh, someone, Tanya says, my cats are staring at me. I'm sorry. I'll turn the volume down if you want to. But uh, I'm going to tell Jamie, give us maybe three minutes between babies, not five. Because this five minutes is kind of long. Mm. Rocky is even making my partially deaf dog react. Well, that's cute. Oh, look. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. 
when we see that yawn, now we know, okay, he's going to cry himself to sleep. You know, there are people that actually think it's healthy to have babies cry themselves to sleep. I don't know how you all were with mothering, but there are, that is a, that's a thing that's out there that the, the, there's a type of crying myself to sleep is actually a good thing. It doesn't work when you're older. It's not healthy when you get to be my age. I can, I can vouch for that. <laughs> Yes, please. Oh my God, Rocky never stopped crying the whole time. Oh, let's go ahead. Boy. Let's. Are you watching on the inside of the house? A little bit. I can't turn it up because she's freaks All right, out. Let's go ahead and put it for three minutes. Okay. This is five. Pugsley. This is Pugsley. Oh no, this is the fattest one, right? Yeah. So Pugsley is by far our fattest. <laughs> Look at that little face. Pugsley, don't start that. His tongue is always sticking out. He likes his little tongue sticking out. Pugsley, there's nothing here to eat. You're on video, Pugsley. Look at the belly. Look at the belly. Show them your belly. Show them your belly. Look like a little beaver. Look at that. Pugsley's cute. I don't know exactly what kind of dog Pugsley looks like. <laughs> he is a chunky monkey, though. You want the towel? I tell you what, I told Jamie at first, give me about 10 minutes with each baby. And she said, that's going to be too long. And I'm like, why? They're going to sit there and sit in my arms and just be so happy and so content. Oh, my gosh. If Pugsley is St. Bernard, we're in trouble. Okay. Now, calm down. Normally, when you can kind of like get them into your blanket and wrap them up and kind of make them feel safe, they'll stop all that whiny stuff. Look at the little face. Can y'all see his little tongue? <laughs> A lot of y'all are saying that your dogs in your house are going crazy. Susan says, my hound is looking for him. Oh, no. Keep the hound away. Pugsley is adorable. Mm -hmm. I really do hope that they can all go to great homes. Homes that don't mind sending us occasional video updates so we can, you know, post those and have occasional. My pit bull has that same coloring. Ooh. Yeah. Jamie actually said that it could be kind of a pit bull. Uh, some uh, Amber says, my dog is whining right along with. Oh, no, I don't want to have all your homes all distraught with, oh, there's the yawn. That's it. Okay. A lot of people talk about puppy breath and how great it smells. And I agree. There's a, It's not just the breath, though. It's just the, the dog in general. And so isn't that amazing how mom does all of the bathing? Mom cleans them from top to bottom, and she does it multiple times a day. Well, I'll tell you what, this one over here was doing really good. Pugsy's doing really oh, sweet. So I shortened it too much now. <laughs> you never know, Jamie. You never know. So someone says black lab. I don't know, y'all, but this is a really beautiful he's dog. Cute. I wonder but, if he has some mastiff in him because of his wrinkles in his eyes and how big he is. Yeah, he's. but I will say he's going to be huge. And he had a really good checkout yesterday with the vet. Thank you, this babe. This is fair. How many more? <laughs> We're halfway there, I think, huh? Uh, I think we only got one more. No, two more, I think. Okay, this is this is another one that I really have attached to. This is Bear. Uh, I, I don't know why I call him Bear. It just looks like a bear to me, like a brown bear from in Alaska or something. A brown bear. He has a really sweet demeanor, and he has a very funny face. I can't wait till he opens his eyes. His mouth is always cracked open like he's a bear, like he's just ready to attack. Can y'all believe that? <laughs> Look at that face. <laughs> He's very, very, very sweet um, because even at uh, just a couple of days old, you can already see that there's the demeanor in the puppy. It doesn't take long to show you who's patient, who's not, you know, who's needy. Can I just say needy? Uh, which ones like to be held? Which ones just they want to have their own free space? They want to move. You've seen some that are very dominant and they will fight for the teat. They literally will use their size. Look at that little paw. He's waving at y'all. They'll use the, I call it a paw, like a bear paw. Mm. They'll use their size and their weight to push the other babies away. And so, yeah, I know. Oh, my goodness gracious. Oh, my goodness gracious. This over here is Bear. And he is a handsome little fella. And he's doing really good. He's like, I was kind of enjoying my mommy time. I was kind of enjoying mommy time, but now I can't. Because mm. you need time with daddy, too. Um, how many males and females did she have out of the six? So we, you know, we lost one of the males. I hate that, but we lost one of the males. So that leaves us with two females and then we'll have, uh, the, uh, the four males. 
There, that's cute. What's on your nose? Is that something? There. I'm trying to show them to both videos, both platforms. Uh, Y'all do know that one of the things that we'll talk about a little bit later after I finish showing all the puppies is the differences in Facebook and YouTube because we're having a lot of misunderstanding of what's going on and why it's going on. I don't want to talk business right now, though. What's under his nose? Is that is that like mucus or is that milk? What's under your nose? Or is that just something shiny? <laughs> okay, I don't know. I'm going to clean your nose. No. Yeah, I think so. Mm. Oh, we got Wednesday. All right, I love you. Mm. Look at that little belly before I let him go. There. Look at that little tummy. Look at that little tummy. Give me that teddy bear. Oh, I know. He is like a teddy bear. All right, hi, Wednesday. This is our second female. Uh, so we have Holly or Darlene. And then we have Wednesday and Jamie named her Wednesday because of the fact that she, uh, the popular TV show right now, Wednesday, the little girl from the Adams family, uh, not TV show, the little, um, the movie that we saw it on Netflix Wednesday. And this is our little Wednesday. She looks like she may have the same colorings and a lot of the same attributes or characteristics from the same daddy who gave us, Pugsley. Little tongue is always out. She has a lot more white on her than what Pugsley does. But uh, she's healthy, fat. Look at that belly. Look at that little belly right there. Okay, 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 okay. I don't think any woman or man wants someone saying, look at that belly. Look at that belly. And so Wednesday is no different. She's like, hey, cover, cover me up. Cover me up. Baby, I'm trying to cover you up. Mm, 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 mm. There, am I kissing you too much? Too many kisses? A lot of folks don't understand why you kiss animals. I can't help it, though. I've always kissed animals. And uh, for everyone that says, their mouths are dirty. And trust me, we've probably put our mouths in dirtier places, y'all. <sighs> Come on, seriously. And uh, hey, we've all caught COVID. Most of us have, have had COVID multiple times and we're still kicking. You know what I'm saying? And so if COVID didn't take us out, then I promise you kissing this puppy is not going to take us out, okay? That always gets me. Every one of us, every one of us have had, seriously, have had COVID two or three times, maybe more. And if we're still alive and kicking after all that COVID stuff, <laughs> I doubt we're going to be taken out by Wednesday. So... Oh my gosh, last one. Mm, has it been six already? This is Yeah. Now, oh my gosh. Now, you guys are going to see a lot of her, and I'll tell you Him. why. Him. Uh, Jake has already claimed this one for his own. You had to, you, you had to have known it that Jake was going to want a dog that looked like. Oh my gosh. Please, please. I'm not mama. Well, Jake was going to want a dog that looked like Moo. And uh, this is the only one now that we've lost the other that has that Moo white and black look. And so this one over here will be going with Jake and uh, his girlfriend. Mm -hmm. They're coming out on the 25th to Longhorn Lester's to visit and to have a peek at this little sweet, 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 sweet. Mm -hmm. There. I've been calling it Moo. I've just been calling it Moo to make it simple. Look at that. Are you yawning? Are you yawning? That's so sweet. Yeah, I've been calling him Moo. And it is a little male. He's not as big as the others. Look at his markings. He's not as heavy as the others. Now, he's eating fine. He's growing fine. And his vet check went perfect. So there's nothing at all wrong here. But uh, this is the one we call Moo. <laughs> and so ultimately Moo and Holly or Darlene are the only two that have already been promised a wonderful home. And uh, hey, I will stay on Jake's ass to make sure he offers Moo a good home. Uh, none of that just running the roads and all that stuff that Clubber, his other dog does, or his cat. He's going to have to make sure that Moo... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm is a really good dog that's taken care of and will help him around the farm. 
Oh my goodness, are you cold? It's not cold in here. It actually is fairly cold in Texas today, but I have had the heater on in here. Here it comes. No, but they don't cry like that for me. Jamie, are you trying to say you're a better mommy than I am? Yes. Look. You can take the whole towel. Oh. You're going to sit down and hold on for a minute? No, I can't. I got a call. Jamie's working. All right, babe. Thank you. You notice he stopped. Huh? She said, you notice he stopped crying. Okay. okay. Well, you know what? Jamie had her fun with the babies last night, which was Thursday night. Uh, I had the, I had Lex. I had Lex. We did our typical, our usual Thursday night hangout. And um, so, so Jamie got a lot of loving from the babies. But I will say that even when Jamie's here, her loving and my loving is different. Can we talk for a minute about the differences in daddy loving and mama loving babies in general? Maybe, maybe human babies or animal babies. I like to love rough. I'm a rough, rough lover, if you will. So I just can't sit there and like, so I just can't sit there and like this. This is not what I do. I, I can't do that. I got to pick them up and like, I got to like hold them and I got to like tickle their tummies and I go, and I do all that crazy stuff. I like that crazy stuff. And um, Jamie is just like, she doesn't even want to touch them. She just wants to like, like her, like just Jamie's like, just like, like this and all gentle and sweet and stuff. And I'm like, give me that little minute. Give me, you know, and I have a lot of fun, but whoever says I never had COVID. Yes, you have. You just are blessed and have, have it had it as bad as the rest of us. Uh, everyone's had COVID by now. There's no one who hasn't had it. You just didn't realize it. So you are consider yourself blessed. As a matter of fact, most people have had it two or even three times by now. So you can say you never had it. So I never had, I was never officially diagnosed with COVID either. But what I did was realize when there were people around me who had it and I began to feel not well-ish, even there was once a COVID, the, the, the second time that I had COVID, I never had a sneeze, a cough, a runny nose. I, all I felt was fatigued. All I felt was more tired than before. And, um, and so there was probably about four or five days that I just felt like I probably cannot walk from here to the barn without... Uh, okay. Okay. So now we're, let's just go ahead and not, let's just get off the COVID thing because now it's, now it's turned political. Now it's turned political. I tell you what, there's very little you can say this in this day and age without having, without having people, uh, jump down your throat. I'll tell you what I did a couple of days ago. Hey, by the way, puppy time is over. Puppy time is over. So anyone that wants to go ahead and leave now, uh, now that we're going to get into the real talk, you're more than welcome to leave. I tell you, you know, uh, Longhorn Lester's and I'm a Survivor Sanctuary, my pages are an acquired taste. They are. I will just say that Longhorn Lester's and I'm a Survivor Sanctuary, which belong to me, are an acquired taste. What that means is we could be having church on one day. We could be having a funeral the next. You never know what the mood or the tempo of the video is going to be about. I can be riding Jake's behind about something, and the next day, he's employee of the month. And so you never really know what you're going to get. But, I, but one thing that you do know you're going you're gonna to get is no matter what my video is about, there's always going to be people here who don't like it, who just don't like it. And so that's why I always say that it's an acquired taste. And if you watch us for the first time and I might be, I'm, I could be on some kind of a rant. It may not be the best way to judge this book just by one video. But I'll tell you one thing that I know for a fact is that our dedication and love to these animals is what mo brought most people here. Our understanding that we're all survivors of something no matter if it's a natural disaster like many of us have been through or a fire or a sickness or the man we do it we talk say it all the time financial worries or abuse neglect 
horrible things that people have to survive and overcome relationships, divorce, you name it, sick, sickness and health. Every single one of us have come here for a reason. And usually it's the animals that bond us. They're the glue that keep us coming back. But even in an animal channel, which I think that we are, we've also evolved to being a channel where there's a lot more that goes on than just, just animals. Animals are the backstory. Animals are going to be the, they're the past, the present, and the future. But we're, we're also human, y'all. We're human. And as humans, we, we sometimes make mistakes. We don't have people that work for us like publicists and those that make sure that we say the right things and that we don't talk about certain things. And ultimately, we all bleed red, y'all. We all bleed red, okay? And there is blood, sweat, and tears that go into our lives, as does yours. And you have passions about some things that others are not passionate about. And some things we can disagree on and we still can love each other. And I try to say that all the time. And that's something that my boss taught me. My boss of 27 years taught me that you can always agree to disagree. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's the way the world is. And you have to be accepting of that, that you're not going to agree on everything. And so we, um, yeah, we do. We make mistakes here and there. I will say that. Thank you for the, uh, Jane says, Cog Hill sent me to your channel. We're very blessed for having friends like Jason and Brooke at Cog Hill. We're blessed for having friends like Daniel and DJ over at the Arms Family. We've uh, made new friends with Sean and Brandy over at Keeping It Dutch. Now, I will say this. All of these farms are different. There, there, if you were to, to take each of these, four, I just named four farms. Uh, now, there's more than that. Don't think these are my only, the, the, my only connection in social media. I'm also friends with Jesus H. Christ on YouTube <laughs> and Urban Ranch Rescue with that crazy fool over there in Dallas. Uh, listen, there, uh, Wes and Angie, Marcy and Crandall. My God, guys, there's a lot of neat things that we've been exposed to in social media. And I love them all for, for who they are. Yet every single one of our pages are different. And so whereas you acquire a taste for a certain creator, you acquire, you know, you find certain things that draw you to that certain individual. And then th once you find your happy place, then by all means, you need to spend more time there. It's uh, foolish to go somewhere where you don't feel happy or you don't like what you're seeing or you can't understand what's happening with things. And which brings us to sort of, I don't like to talk about business, but uh, the emails are getting to be a little bit absurd, to be honest. When um, And I so I don't think you understand. I would like just to explain to you real fast. Again, there are some things that we have to do on our end. Um, so Facebook and YouTube are competitors. I hope that you guys know that Facebook and YouTube are not friends. They are not friends and they are they're like Walgreens and CVS. They're always going to compete. You're always going to see one and the other and they're always going to battle. And so a lot of YouTube people, YouTube people can't stand Facebook people and Facebook people cannot stand YouTube people. Now, there's also many who are saying, you know what? I get there's a difference. I understand that there's a difference in the platforms. And so I'm going to double dip onto both of them because I'm going to double dip. So what we do, and I say we mostly talking about I'm a Survivor Sanctuary and Longhorn Lusters, uh, is that we have realized that there are some people that are Facebook loyal and they don't want to delve into the whole YouTube thing. And others are YouTubers all through and through. And they're not going to go back to the drama of Facebook or, or whatever you want to call it about Facebook. And so what I've done is says, okay, so how can I go about making sure that I try to appease all of my audience, my friends, my social media family, which is you. And the way I've decided to do that is by not, for the most part, starting in this, this new year of 2023, by not 
showing the exact same content. I don't want people to think I can, I'll just get all I need from this because some people don't get it from there. So some people want to have different pages they want to watch. So what I try to do is have a different video for different channels. And what that means is no one's having to watch the same thing twice. Now there are occasions when I will, when a video is relevant, a lot of stuff with the puppies was very relevant to us in general. And so, yeah, I may have played that video twice and because there are some things that I don't want any audience to miss. But the beauty of what we're doing here, and this is my opinion, the beauty of what we're doing is making it to where you can watch Facebook Longhorn Lesters and watch YouTube Longhorn Lesters and you'll see a different video. Yet, even though... In the whole scheme of things, eventually you'll know all that's going on. Just it will not be the exact same video. That's hard for people to understand. And but but that's the way it's going to be. That's the way it's going to be. That's not going to change. And then secondly is the video format, the formatting. So YouTube YouTubers generally watch their videos on their TVs or on their devices or on their phones turned sideways how and so in saying so youtube recommends that you video horizontally so that your viewer can get the full screen effect now that works out great for youtube but the problem is facebook is saying wait a minute 80 percent luster 80 percent of your people are watching from their phones and i'm sorry facebook but if you take a facebook video and flip it, your phone sideways, it makes your, your video is still skinny. It doesn't do like YouTube and make it all long and flat. If 80% of your people are watching from their phones, then the way you watch from your phone is the way you watch everything else from your phone. You scroll through, you scroll by, you, do, you don't sit there and you don't flip it around. People don't do that. Now, if you're going to say, whoa, wait, I do that. I do that, Lester. You're one of the few. And so ultimately, we're trying to appease to everybody. And so I've told you, if you don't find what you need, if you can't handle the narrower or the squared off videos from Facebook, then you know you can go to YouTube and see it this way. If you don't like the videos this way because you want to watch them on your phone, then you can. So ultimately, the problem is not with us. The problem is with some of you guys who are unwilling to realize that we're doing what we have to do for a business decision, a business decision. And my friends, uh, I'm sorry to, to say this, but this business will fail as will any business. If you don't stay on top of it and you have to evolve as your business evolves, the love for the animals has not changed the dedication, the amount of time that we spend, the workload that we take on, and, and making sure that all of the babies are living their best lives has never changed. But what has changed is format and the content of what we, we play on each page. And then the last thing that I want to discuss, is, and we'll be done with the business side of it, the last thing to discuss, uh, that's and we'll be done with business side of it, is the fact that there were so many angry, I, and when I say angry, I mean to the point of cursing and saying horrible words yesterday, not only in the comments, but also in emails that we got because we did release the video that Baby Monday had passed a, a day earlier to those people who subscribe on Facebook. And so I made a pledge to all of the Facebook subscribers at the new year that I was going to do more. I was going to do more uh, for all the blessings that they have installed on the property. I'm a survivor for all the blessings that they've done and allowed us to do it. I'm a survivor every month. The, the amount of money that we send to Chewy for our feed orders and for all the things that we have gotten built, I, I told Jamie, I said, we owe them more. We, we promised them when they joined up that we were going to give them exclusive content. And so what that means is sometimes they'll see the video a little bit earlier. They may get a little bit of more behind the scenes, more uncut. 
but guys, they, 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 they've earned that by helping us so much. And so it's nothing against someone, someone who wrote was very rude. And they put, I'm just a peon because I don't subscribe. No one wants you to subscribe. I'm not asking you to subscribe, but you can't be upset if I give the subscribers something a little extra because they've done so much extra for us. And then another argument was the fact that they felt embarrassed that they had been crying and praying for a baby, not knowing it had passed away the day before. And so that, that was something I probably did not think through. And so the human in me did not think that part through. I'll admit it. The human in me did not think that part through. And so I apologize for any, yeah, because I would felt the same way if I'd been having a, any, a, an animal or a human or anything in my prayers. And then someone comes and tells me, oh, guess what? That animal passed away yesterday. Lester told the subscribers only. And so I know that sometimes people can, well, what do they say? The expression is that information is power. And so sometimes the subscribers may want to show off the, that they have some information. I find that as distasteful. And if you're a subscriber and that was you who did that, I find that as very distasteful. And uh, that was not very pleasing. But at the same time, the damage was done. But uh, some people think knowledge is power. And because they had that tidbit of information, they're just going to go off and start telling everyone else, and that was wrong of you. If you're a subscriber, I'll say this. I'm going to scold you. That was wrong of you because that was our place to do that. That was our place to do that, not yours. And so shame on the subscriber or subscribers who went off and did that and had some kind of fun by letting everyone know that I know something that you don't know because I pay $2.49 a month. So boo-ha. That was wrong. So... I would hope that the subscribers know that we're blessed to have you. I'm a survivor is blessed to have you. The barns, the ponds, the berm, the feeds, the vet cost, all of those things that are taken care of because of the subscribers were so blessed for that. But it doesn't give you power to go off. And it, it I would hope that you would make a better decision decision next time that something like that was to happen. But I'll also learn from that. And next time subscribers will have to wait with for everybody else. If it's something relevant and something that I think is that everyone needs to hear the first time, I'm not going to do that survivor or that uh, subscriber thing anymore, because that was really very, very, very wrong of that particular person or persons. No more Dr. Peppers. I am trying to kick the Dr. Pepper habit. It was another one of my 2023 things. I said I was going to maybe just drink it on occasion, and uh, I, I just I need to kick it. I need to kick it. Listen to me. Look at my face. I'm not trying to. I'm not bragging. I'm an I'm a 50 year old man, but I feel healthier when I drink healthier when I eat healthier. And so I'm not saying that I'm handsome or I'm some kind of a young buck again. But uh, I know that Dr. Pepper was bringing me down. Whole milk was bringing me down. And I know which foods are bringing me down. And so I've been trying to take better care of myself this week. And uh, so, yeah, I'm drinking Crystal Light, which has no sugar. Now, I'm sure it has a sugar substitute. It's probably going to give me cancer. But I'll deal with that when it happens. <laughs> it is mostly water. I eat a lot of ice, too. No, it's, no, 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 Lori. Lori Lou says, ignore the haters. I'm not going to ignore the haters because I listen, because listen to me. If it, if I, ignoring the haters is the same thing as, let's just ignore the Republicans, ignore the Democrats, ignore the, this, ignore the, this, ignore the, no, we're not going to ignore people because even haters can love animals. They may hate my decisions. They may hate my antics, they may not like their phone being turned or their videos being in this format, but they're still people. They're still human beings. And I believe that everyone has a voice to be heard. And so I'm going to, I will listen to the voices normally in the comments, in the emails. And um, 
I will, uh, I'll, I will make adjustments when I need to. I will make adjustments when I need to. And so those are the three topics that I wanted to discuss as far as a business page goes. Um, so there's more people who have Dr. Pepper habits. I do know that uh, it's a hard habit to break. But uh, this crystal light's pretty good. I'm enjoying it. And uh, it, it tastes okay. And it's a lot better for me. Okay. So um, now I guess it's time for you guys to tell me some stuff. Who says there's zero sugar in Dr. Pepper? Oh, there's a zero sugar. Yeah, I don't like it. I don't like that flavor. I don't like the flavor of it. I just like the original Dr. Pepper. So, but no, but I'm going to cut out the caffeine and everything else. I might as well. So, anywho, well, so I need you guys to know that I've been on for a long time. Thank you for taking the time to talk about the business side of everything with me. And then um, thank you for taking the time to look at all the puppies and loving them. Thank you for being so understanding of the one that we lost. And I, I, I give you my word. I tried. I read comments from you guys. I talked to uh, Jamie, who knows a lot. She has that womanly instinct. And, um, and so I, we, we tried, y'all. We tried like crazy. And we, uh, we still lost the baby. But uh, she is in a, in, a, in a really neat spot. I buried her close to my prayer place at Longhorn Lester's, and uh, it's just a beautiful, beautiful spot. Uh, something else that's going on at the sanctuary, and I'll go ahead and just talk about this right now, is that we have given the boys, I shouldn't call them boys, let me take that back, the guys, the men, um, as far as L.E., my son, who's 22, almost 23, Jake, who's 27, almost 28, and Ben, who's 20, almost 21. So they can't, I can't call them boys. I make that mistake a lot when I call ladies girls. Um, for some reason, it's this is this is a man problem. This is a man problem. Men will call a lady girl girl, hey girls, hey girls. But you don't want to call adult men boys. Because that's, so we need to learn that this, anyway, long story, let's change that subject. Uh, but I told the guys that in, we're starting the new year off right. Jamie and I have been at the sanctuary and we have worked our tails off and we've gotten a lot of stuff cleaned out and cleaned up and we're sorting, organizing. And that goes from everything from the feed room to the tool room, to our pharmacy room, uh, to our barn dominium. We've discovered things that we thought we had lost. We found things that we didn't know we still had. And we get it, we're we going to keep it that way. So what I did was I sent a text to the guys yesterday. And I said, starting Monday, uh, you have a work shift. And so your work is going to be from 4 o'clock in the afternoon, from 4 to 6. Two hours of work, 4 to 6. And so Ellie is weekend. So every Saturday and Sunday, Ellie is going to come by and he's going to work from four to six. Um, that's his job. That's how he gets paid from us. And so he's going to have his job to do. Ellie's job is going to be tough because he's going to be really doing both Ben and Jake's jobs, but by himself. So Ben will also be from four to six so that I can be there to supervise. And that, that's what it boils down to. It really just takes someone being there to say what to do, how to do it, if, you, if they need help, uh, returning things when they need to be returned, and just knowing kind of managing. I'm just going to be there as the manager. I have to be the manager. But uh, it'll be better because it keeps the animals on a consistent schedule. It'll be better because it's going to make sure that all jobs are getting done because there are some days when the, 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 the men get in a hurry and they rush in there, do their job and leave in five minutes and things don't get done or things get misplaced or things get lost or things run out of fuel or whatever. And so it's just going to be a lot easier. So I've managed to work out my schedule to where I can make sure that I do my Longhorn Lester work earlier. I can get over to I'm a survivor and do my job, my jobs over there. And then all the boys will show up. All the men will show up at four and I can get them going on their jobs. 
And then I said, if you come on over and you get to work and you'll be done. And so there's no way that the guys can't find two hours, five days a week to devote to their job. Because like I said before, we pay them very well. And, uh, and I've also said to them that what they do here is a blessing in the fact that there's a lot of people who are benefiting from, I'm a survivor. A lot of family members are making a living off of their piggybacking off of I'm a survivor. And so it's only right that they do their part in being a part of maintaining and helping out uh, something that Jamie and I started. And so for the four years that Jamie and I worked there, we, not we, we, along with the help of many of you, uh, built that place from, from the rubble up. And we did. We made it into a beautiful, beautiful place. We've had help along the way with the ponds, with some of the barns. And uh, there for a long time, I'm a Survivor truly was the most beautiful farm that you would see on any internet channel. I'm sure there's very wealthy farms out there that are immaculate. But of all the channels that we watch, I'm a Survivor Sanctuary is the most, it is by far the most beautiful of all of the farms but we've been getting a lot of comments and a lot of messages lately about how it looks old, how it looks run down. And, and, and it's tr and you're right. It's not that you're being negative or mean. You're very right. You're, you're right. And um, and so that's our fault. And so it has been harder on us since we've acquired Longhorn Lester's taking care of both properties. But we're blessed to have the property here. We're blessed. The animals that live here are living their best lives. And so we're going to continue to do what we have to do. But as far as our farm help employees, don't, don't, don't ever think that the, the men show up just to be kind, just because they're good guys. They come to work, they come to make money. And that's how we're able to pay them as employees. If I'm a survivor, but they have to work for that money. And so we have talked about that with the fellas. We got it understood that work will be from four to six every afternoon. And that's year round. And just like if you had a real job at Kroger or Walmart or anywhere else, and you have to take time off or a day off, then you let us know so we can have someone cover your shift. And so I hope I'm hopeful that this is going to be better for us. And we're going to get this place cleaned up and looking as beautiful as it ever did. Because it truly is a beautiful place. We've been very blessed. Um, we have amazing animals there, some really neat personalities, and they truly do deserve better than what they've gotten this past year. And I will say that that's a lot to do on my part for not spending as much time there because I've been so busy over here. <laughs> but uh, anyway... Bree is a hard worker, but Bree has her own place. Bree doesn't work at I'm a Survivor. Bree works on Bree's place. And then Jake will also eventually have his fence all finished, and he'll start his barn. And Jake will probably spend more time at his own place as well with his own animals. So I do know that that's probably a um, – Jake's job at I'm a Survivor will play itself out, and Jake knows that, but – the, the good thing is Jake will evolve more into his own property, whatever he calls it, whatever he names it. And that will be great for him and Lisa, Alyssa, did I say it wrong? That will be great for him and her to have their own thing because it's important for a man or a woman to take pride in something that's yours. And a lot of folks have wondered why I haven't been there helping Jake more with this fencing guys. All I can say is that you, don't believe everything you see in videos. Obviously, when you make the videos, you control the narrative. Everyone will tell you that. And um, Jake has been guided. Jake has spent a year with me building fence. So Jake has experience. And uh, Jake has the know-how. And Jake uh, and Jake is doing fine. And his fence is coming out great. And whatever Jake is unable to do or when he needs help, he's, he's a man and he asked for it. And there's a lot of folks who go over and help. So anyway, uh, we help Jake more than you probably realize, but that's Jake's video. Those are Jake's videos y'all. Um, and I'm not going to sit there and impose and make my video on a Jake project. So, uh, I don't, I don't know what's going on. Uh, people be polite. Jake needs 
to stop hurting himself. <laughs> Jake is doing very well on his fencing. Lester, you're a busy man. Sounds like time for Jake to be a man. Jake puts T post backwards. <laughs> We've all done that. I have promised you I've done that more times than I can count. But uh, anyone that puts t post in the ground will know why it's easier to put them backwards, even though there's a right way and a wrong way. Putting a t post in the proper way, if you already have your wire, a t post has knobs. And, it, and sometimes you can end up loosening your wire by putting your t post in the ground. So it's tough to put a t post in the right way trust me on that one and um yeah brianne is great with jake all right well listen i don't think that there's a whole lot more for me to talk to you about uh if you have any questions i'll be happy to answer them if you'll put your questions in all bold so i can see it's a question i uh, will be more than happy someone says jake praised you for helping him financially with his fencing yes that would be i'm a survivor not lester morrow lester morrow has no money just you might as well know that if you think that lester morrow is rolling in dough you're wrong uh, i'm a survivor and longhorn lester's which is an llc uh, make money from videos and so we were blessed to be able to help jake with his fencing uh, financially but um, jake's doing the work Jake's doing the work. I've built enough fence and I'm trying to heal from a bad shoulder. Um, why are you wet? That's in all bold. So I'm not quite as wet as I was when I started, but it is raining here. And I was outside doing a job on the tractor. Oh, I'm excited to bring you that video. Uh, how is Dixie? That's more of a Jamie topic. And, uh, but I will say that Dixie had a, um, some blood work done recently and Jamie is, will be the one to share all of that with you because there's some things that only Jamie is entitled to talk about with that. How is Pearl? She's skinny as always. <laughs> She's just a skinny little girl. Thank you all for going all bold. How is Tina? She's doing amazing. Like she was never hurt. She, like she was never hurt. How is Trixie handling the pups? They get along great. Christmas loves being inside with Christmas and uh, Trixie. Why are you wet? I already answered that. Al Davis is doing amazing. There's videos about him, uh, I think, tomorrow on Facebook. Um, so thank you. How bad the post messed up the additions at Long... Okay, how bad are the posts messed up on the addition at Longhorn Lester's? Uh, I'm only guessing that you saw the guy dumping the dirt... And he did back in and hit one of my posts. Uh, he did break the concrete, but all I had to do was stand it back up and I redug and I reset the post. So the post is fine. Why do you repeat sentences, Wanda? I was a teacher and I'm not perfect. Wanda, I'm sitting here talking to one, two, three, four, five, six. Wanda, there are 7,000 people watching me right now and I'm a bit nervous, okay? Wanda, when is the last time you stood up in front of 7,000 people and had to say anything without pissing your pants, okay? <laughs> you want to know why I'm all wet? You want to know why I'm really all wet, Wanda? Wanda, uh, are you really going to go there? Uh, so <laughs> yeah, listen, I talk with a lisp. I talk too fast. I will sometimes slur my words. Have y'all ever seen when I do a video that's unedited? I have fun with them sometimes. I have fun with them on occasion. I'll actually play a video that's unedited so you can see how tough it actually is. Uh, this morning, that video was on Longhorn Lester's channel, Facebook. And I thought, people don't realize how hard it is when you make a video to, uh, how are you now after losing? I, I lost it. Sorry. Um, wow. Uh, oh, thank you, Lester. We love you. How's text? Every, everyone's fine, y'all. Everyone is fine. Don't worry about anybody. Everyone's doing fine. But, um, I think I've answered all the questions that I'm seeing. Can we see the puppies? Tammy, go to the front of the video and you'll see all of the puppies. We already showed them all. Ringo's doing great. Okay. Oh, Michelle says, how are you though, Lester? Michelle, I'm as sick as ever. I am as sick as ever. I'm trying to be very careful with my anti-anxiety meds and take them as needed. Sometimes I 
can know that I need one, but just not take it because I don't want to destroy my liver. And then, um, um, with my, um, my prescriptions, I know that, um, this is the downfall. So if you take your prescriptions, you take your pills, you take your meds, you're putting yourself at risk for liver and kidney and, you know, other kinds of complications. However, if you don't take your meds, you put yourself at other kinds of risk, not sleeping, not being able to relax, just once you could take a toll on you in other ways. So it's really a, a, a catch 22. I think they call that you dam damned if you do and damned if you don't. If you take your prescriptions, you, you kind of know that all of the body organs that have to break all these things down or, or, or you're, you're putting yourself in a, in a tough situation and you don't want to break down too early. <laughs> you don't want to break down too early. I know that that's coming. Yes. Antidepressants and liver disease go hand in hand. Yeah, I know. Okay. I know that. So I'm trying to be real careful with my antidepressants and my anxiety pills. But I also know that there's days when I need them. I think that you can tell. I think that you can tell when I haven't had them and I probably should. But um, I have not been down the river a second time yet. The kayak adventure was a lot of fun. But uh, that was uh, that was a once in a while thing for me. Uh, we'll, we'll be rescuing more animals soon. And says Lorraine on YouTube. And I'm always open as long as we can financially afford it. And if it doesn't pose a risk to the humans or the other animals who are going to work with them, I'm okay with that. I will uh, tell you right now that I've never been, we, you know, we've always taken farm animals. We've taken farm animals and farm animals is what we started off rescuing. And so how crazy is it that now we've gotten some kittens and now we've gotten some dogs and now puppies. And I tell you what, I told Jamie, I don't want to, I don't want to forget who we are. We're not a dog and cat rescue. Okay. It's not a dog and cat rescue. Lorraine, my dad made that up. Tex is not the daddy. My dad just wants child support, I can promise you, or alimony or whatever else. But Tex is not the father to that uh, calf. Tex was never out of his pasture. Uh, nope, nope, and nope. That was not true. That would be my dad just trying to take advantage. Yeah, my dad's trying to get on the, the payroll. Uh, so, yes, we did rescue the little deer. All right. And so are you getting closer to setting up your Texas stud service? No, I'm going to have to wait until we get um, Pearl and Gracie moved back to I'm a Survivor. But I cannot move Pearl and Gracie to I'm a Survivor until Jake gets his fence done to get Moo, Santoro, and, and Annabelle off of my pastures. Because don't forget, uh, Santoro is the brother to... Pearl and Gracie and Santoro is becoming of age and we don't want them to somehow begin to intermingle. So when I move Waylon, Jolene, and eventually Pearl and Gracie all together, that will be a herd of four Waylon as the bull. And then his three lady friends, which are all sisters. Wait, not Jolene. That's not a sister. Joel, I, don't get me on that. I, I can't keep up with all that in my head right now. <laughs> I can't keep up with all that right now, but there's a lot of things coming, a lot of changes with the farm stuff happening here and there. Don't forget at some point, we'll bring some goats back over here to Longhorn Lester's. And then um, are you still trying to get Santa or get him to another no kill rescue? So we're all we're doing now with Santa is feeding him whenever we see him. We don't see him there a lot but we're going by and feeding all the time. We, um, I told Jamie, I says, those would be great video contents for all that we're doing. But listen, uh, I want to tell you about a comment someone said in that last video that I'll, this is, please, everyone hear this. Everyone hear this. This is the, the comment 
that really got me in the last time. And it had like 30 people who liked it. The little thumbs up. They said, Lester's not feeding stray dogs more than he's feeding his own ego. <laughs> yes, someone said that. Someone said Lester is not feeding stray dogs more so he's feeding his own ego. And I'm like, wait a minute. I go and I buy a pack of weenies, usually three packs of weenies. And I go by and I throw weenies off to these stray dogs, which cost me maybe a total of $6 and an hour of my day. An hour of my day. And in that process, I made a video showing you another man who was also feeding the, the strays. And then I was showing you some of the strays in the area, including one stray chicken. I thought it was a cute video. And if uh, that video didn't come out and then, you know, Facebook will put your, your comments in order of most relevant. And so I had uh, slept in that morning, but when I finally turned the video on to watch and I saw that the number one comment was that the one I just told you, Lester's not feeding stray dogs as much as he's feeding his own self ego or whatever. And there was 30 something likes on that. I'm thinking, wow, I, I really, I thought, wow. I says, wow, Jamie. I'm like, I took time. I drove down the streets of the neighborhood, tossing out weenies. I built an, a man, a total stranger. I built him up. I tried to build him up to encourage other people to be a hero to these animals. I didn't call me the hero. I called this strange man who I never met the hero. Along with that video, I fed multiple dogs and I videoed a cat and a chicken. And I thought it was a cute video. And uh, for this particular individual who put this comment along with 30 other people that thought, yeah, Lester's just feeding his ego. Lester just feeds animals to feed his ego. Well, you know what? Yeah, so I, I told Jamie, if that's what the Internet thinks, then we'll just feed animals low key. What is it? We don't got to make a video every time we go to the neighborhood because every video is going to be the same thing. Every video will be the same thing. It will be. Here goes Lester again, trying to feed his ego. Listen to me, uh, crazy man who said that. If Lester wanted to, I could go put on a chicken suit and dance around in the pasture and video myself uh, and make a video about that. I've done worse. I walked out in the pasture as a unicorn once. And uh, Lester doesn't need that kind of recognition anymore. Lester, that may have been a Lester of yesteryear, but now I, I'm completely content with slowing down a little bit and just devoting what time and energy I do have to helping any human or animals around us. And it's not about ego, I don't think. I think it's more about just knowing that there's a legacy that we're going to leave behind. As we get older, you become more aware of the fact that you may not have done enough on your uh, with your time here on earth. And so you begin to look for ways to <laughs> make the world a better place. And if you, in fact, make your living off of videos, then you have to post a video. And so, no. For you cruel, heartless people, I wonder how many dogs you go off and feed every day. Probably zero. Probably zero. But uh, it is what it is. Uh, the inter internet can be very mean. It can be very mean. Um, it can be very mean. And it's just something that you have to deal with when you make videos. And that you open your world up. You live in your glass house. And everyone can tell you what they want to tell you. But um, no. So I don't even know where that came from. Anywho, okay, well, hey, it's been well past my hour, uh, an hour and nine minutes. I'm in trouble now. So thank y'all, and remember that um, the um, we're trying hard to make sure that our two channels are run like two businesses. 
They're not competing with each other. We're not trying to get people on one or the other. I like the double Ds. I love double Ds. What can I say? With my hands up, I love double Ds. Double dippers is what I, what I mean. For all of y'all who are going to freak out, I like double Ds. I like the double dippers, those that watch Facebook and YouTube. But I, but I understand that not everyone can do that or have time for that. So instead, I want to make sure that whatever channel you watch, you're going to be able to keep up with what's going on at that property. And if you do double dip, you're not going to watch the same video twice. I'm going to try hard not to do that. And for the subscribers, I will try to continue to find a little bit of different content, maybe a little extra content, additional content, behind the scenes content, maybe a slip of the tongue content. Uh, just so that you know that we're thinking about you and that we appreciate you. That's And so that's all there is to it. I'm not asking anybody to go subscribe because everybody will eventually know everything because I cannot keep anything a secret, okay? So there. Anyway, you don't have to be mean, y'all. Let your light shine. Let your light shine and know that you only get this life once. So make the most of it and you're not getting the most of your life when you're sitting there criticizing people and putting them down. There's no glory for you in heaven or for any afterlife. If that's the kind of life you're going to make of yourself now, you're going to die miserable. <laughs> you're going to die alone and miserable, and you're never going to know why. And that's because you have became so negative that it's become chronic. And that's all you know is to be mean. And you don't want to become that person. So... But by all means, if you have a, an opinion, there's there's a there, there's a way to express your opinions. Anyway, we got to go, guys. We got work to do outside. I got chores. I got the other property to get over to. And we got puppies to love, as always. Thank you all for watching. I love you very much. I need you in my life. Please don't leave me. Please don't leave me. Uh, I've said that a few times, haven't I? But uh, thank you all. And we will catch you next time. All right. I'm going to end the broadcast on YouTube first. So YouTube, thank you guys.